All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Brandon Fruarty, who is over in Sarasota, Florida. How are you doing, Brandon? John, it's great to be here. Yeah, and Brandon uh, actively sells to the world's largest brands with his with conversational AI and SaaS leader live person. Sold over fifty million dollars in total SaaS deals, uh, uh, but you decided to ditch what you call the hustle culture to create a unique personal operating system from the ground up, one designed to sustain peak performance without sacrificing health and well-being. Um, so, wow, that's quite a that's quite an <laughs> undertaking, quite a framework. So, I mean, first of all. Let's just sort of go back to the beginning. What drove you to actually look at creating your own performance operating, your own personal operating uh, system? I would say the impetus was the onset of the pandemic. Um, you know, pre-pandemic in strategic selling, I was on a plane just about every week. I mean, literally, there would be three or four months at a stretch. I would be on a plane, different time zones every single week. And it wouldn't be uncommon to travel across the country. And you know what an endeavor like that is here in the US, going from one time zone to another just for an hour meeting to turn around and, and come right back. And when that happens, you know, your your diet is off, your sleep is off. And when those things are off, your performance can be off. And when that adds up and accumulates, um, you know, it can affect performance. So actually, when the pandemic hit, uh, it reminded me of, of a time in uh, my early adulthood. I was actually an aspiring professional footballer or soccer player, and I was with a professional club in Eastern Europe. And uh, we had you know, a similar schedule every single day. Uh, you know, we'd get up at the same time, we'd go to bed at the same time, training was always at the same time, our meals were always at the same time. So that sort of consistent schedule um, allowed me to get 1% better every single day as a player. And so when the pandemic hit and I had that opportunity to go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time, uh, eat at the same time, I actually started uh, really digging deep on that and started measuring, um, well, you know, what if I look at my sleep, for instance, could that have a measurable impact on my sales? And what I discovered is absolutely it did. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's fascinating. Um, you don't mind me, what, what club was it you played with? Yeah, it was in Romania. Uh, it was, it's not a known club, uh, oh, FC yeah. Petrolo Ploiesht in a small town north of Bucharest. Oh, fantastic. Uh, but yeah, but your point there, though, is, is obviously, you know, in sports, right, when they're going for peak performance, I, I'm, I'm, I love soccer, football myself, and I like uh, mixed martial arts and all of that. But you see when people are preparing for peak performance, they're not going crazy all the time, the way we yeah. have kind of been brought up, especially in corporate America, like go, go, go. They don't do that because they realize that recovery time, they also realize that you can over stress your body, over prepare yourself mentally get yourself fit there's so many lessons we can take but yet in the corporate world we're still addicted to constant motion you know working all the hours god sends and all of this kind of stuff and just just being on that that, that hamster wheel yeah yeah that's right it's worn like a badge of honor almost mm -hmm. um the fact that you're going to bed at midnight and waking up at 4 a.m to get a, a step on the competition um but what I found is that corrosive culture bleeds down to the employees, particularly in sales, because we all have that entrepreneurial mindset and it's easy to get caught in that trap. I got caught in the trap. Um, in my early thirties, I actually had a, a mini stroke. Uh, it was a big health scare. It was one of the, the, the other driving reasons for wanting to prioritize my health over hustling. Um, and so I think we need to rethink that. And if, if anything, I'm hoping my performance over the past year, year and a half, which was closing more in annual recurring revenue, 
than I did the old way, operating the old way, I was not only able to sell more, but I was also to, able to accelerate deal cycles. Um, and, and I do it in, in a very simple way. It's, it's very common sense, but I think it's missed by a lot of, of sellers. Yeah, so let's 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 get into the personal um, performance system, the personal operating system that you yeah. that you built, and how it's the antidote to to hustle. Because I do think that the pandemic gave a lot of people a time out for a moment, maybe. Yeah. And I think, and sometimes it's like you know, when you're on the hamster wheel, it's not until you step off it for a few moments that do you realize how much you've been missing, maybe how exhausted you are, all of those things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so once I got off the hamster wheel, I really did try to take advantage of, of the pandemic. Obviously, it was devastating for a lot of folks, but you know, for, for us in SaaS sales, knowledge workers who could work remotely, I tried to really harness that and take advantage of that. And, and what I found was um, honing in on four key principles of, of my system. I call it PREP, and it stands for the first P is planning, um, and then the rest, effort, and perform. And uh, again, it's a, it's a very simple framework. So what I try to always do is look at what is the core of success. Uh, the core, the foundational element of success for me is a single workday. Because if I can sort of control and manage a single workday, I can really manage anything with a start middle and end, that could be a sales engagement, it could be a meeting, it could be a demo. But I wanted to start with the work day because if I can control that uh, incrementally over the course of many work days, uh, over the course of a year, I can make a major impact. So planning is the, the last thing that I do every single work day for tomorrow. So the last activity I've sort of built it into my calendar, um, you know, Transparently, John, you're my last call for today. This is the last meeting. Um, after this, I have a, about a 25 minute routine that I go through to sort of review my current day and then plan out and block out my calendar for tomorrow. So I'll do that so that tomorrow, well, actually before tomorrow, that allows me to close up the laptop and get proper rest and recovery. I don't have anything weighing on my mind. All the tasks I've done, my brain dump into my system. I know it's waiting for the waiting for me there. Um, it's all mapped out on my calendar for tomorrow. And so now I can fully be present with my wife. We can relax. Uh, we can enjoy our dinner. I don't have to peek down at my my email because I've cleaned out my inbox. I don't have to have these things. If it is. If I do get emailed, even if it's from an important prospect or client, it can wait until tomorrow. It's not life and death, really. Right. So, uh, and what what are the things I just wanted to just uh, just underline there is is that whole idea of planning because um, let's face it, uh, a lot of times in sales and in business in general, planning goes out the window because of of what we were talking about before, because of this like perpetual motion and jumping from one thing to another, and we live in this kind of we live in this culture i call it like i mean the shortcut culture but also like the distracted culture you know where everybody's busier than they've ever been before but it's not real they're actually just more distracted so it takes dis it takes discipline to do this and i feel that that sometimes just goes out the window and planning is one of the first things that's thrown out the window yeah absolutely if we're too busy being busy with the wrong type of work when do we actually get the real work done that that moves us towards either closing transformation deals or more importantly, moves us closer to the North Star that we've mapped out for our life. And if we're too busy to even map out that North Star in our life, we will perpetually stay on that hamster wheel abiding to rules created by somebody else versus rules and principles that we've defined for our life. And so you can't be so busy um, or in, in, in that you rightly point out be so distracted that we don't allow ourselves to do that that deep work and that reflection. Absolutely. And the other thing, the other thing too, is the you know the idea of being you know fully present. Because uh, to your point, I mean, if you're planning out and looking at the day, right, 
um, that's a manageable thing. And as you said, you can put tangible, you know, things to get uh, to get achieved during that time. But oftentimes we spend far too much time looking at like too far down the road or yeah. looking at a lofty goal or whatever. And, and our, our focus is all future forward as opposed to what's right in front of us. Yeah. If we, again, just dissect the small little things that we can control, um, they will add up uh, significantly over time. I, I wholeheartedly believe in this concept of incremental gains. Just get 1% better each day. And all I really have, to be honest with you, is you know, not to get too philosophical, is, is the moment all we have is the moment that's, that we're in right now. So being fully present is the best gift we can give to others that I can be fully engaged with you during this podcast episode and this interview so that we have meaningful dialogue. It would be no different than if I was in front of a prospect or a client. I need to give them my full attention versus having an eye over here on Slack, being multitask, multitasking and trying to be present also for my coworkers and colleagues. Same thing is true with family and friends and, and so forth. So we need to be present um, and planning allows you to be present because you can calmly, uh, you, because you've already mapped out your day, a single work day, I can give my all in that day and every day will add up significantly, like I said, over the course of a year. Yeah, and I, and I think the other part about it as well, that it means that you can be intentional and deliberate in what you're doing yeah. as opposed to just being reactive and, and playing catch up. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the, the whole point uh, is, is for me to take control over what that day looks like so that I'm not at the mercy of everybody else. I can operate in the old way, which is just open up the laptop and go straight into my email inbox or straight to Slack. If I start my day with that instead of being intentional, and, and this gets into a little bit of the rest of prep. If I'm intentional, I am making a statement, even subconsciously to myself, I'm giving to myself first. And I call it enlightened empathy. If we can actually give ourselves a moment before we start our busy, hectic day, um, we are giving ourselves the capacity to deliver better to others. And in sales, when we're trying to deliver good service uh, to our clients, we need to give our, to ourselves first because it can really uh, uh, you know, challenge our days if, if the first thing we do is look at an email and it sets us off course. It's so easy mm -hmm. to go down uh, a dark rabbit hole um, and you, yeah. it, it, it's too late to recover in the, uh, in the afternoon. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really, uh, again, important point to, to underline. You know, I often talk about that point about the inputs, particularly first thing in the morning, like how you start your day. If you started with news, well, hey, you know, news is there to provoke you, not to inform you. Um, social media is there to get you on the comparison, you know, rat, you know, rat race and all of that. Um, so it is, it is extremely important. And it's interesting that you're the second person recently who has mention that idea of personal empathy or self-empathy and i think that's a really fascinating point because i know there's a lot of talk about empathy right now and about you know getting into but the idea of being empathetic towards yourself i think that's gotten lost i think so uh absolutely and what i have found interestingly and i actually have data personally backing this up because i track this stuff i've been tracking this for almost two years now i uh, just have a very simple google sheet and what I have found is when I'm sleep deprived, I have less of that empathy. I have less of that intentional focus. And that's when I am most at the mercy of falling back into my old habits and then going down again, that, that dark rabbit hole, which is be reactive, um, be emotional. Um, if something comes, I can, you know, an email comes into my inbox that's not favorable I'm going to react emotionally to it. And uh, then, you know, my, my whole day is out of whack at that point. So when I rest and I give myself uh, because I've planned and everything is off of my mind and off of my plate, I can truly be present. I can be more engaging with my family during the off time. Then when I, I, I sleep, I get a good night's rest. 
and uh, I track it with things like wearables and um, and and apps like uh, Rise. It allows me to measure my sleep debt and keep that in control, keep that in check. And what I found actually my sleep, my sleep debt were better leading indicators than traditional sales metrics, like number of meetings I ran or number of proposals sent. Uh, it was actually sleep and, and a low sleep debt that was going to be a good indicator if I was gonna have a strong uh, work week that week or, or day, I knew how to, if I was not sleeping for whatever reason, well, the night before, well, I could better manage my day, better manage my energy versus my time um, because both are precious resources that uh, have limitations to them. Yeah, no, absolutely. And obviously, if you think about it, it's a vicious cycle because if you get overwhelmed with your work and then you then you're going to bed late and getting up early, you're not sleeping properly because you're stressed and all that. It, it kind of just it's self-perpetuating after a while. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and then the good rest allows me to have quality effort. We touched upon this a little bit before. Good quality effort is being present. Uh, it's also solo tasking, not multitasking. We're not getting anything more done. We're actually getting less done by having my attention diverted over here on Slack and email and trying to build that presentation or strategic proposal. I'm better off just focusing on if I'm trying to build a strategic proposal for a large enterprise, I should give my dedicated effort towards that and remove those, dis those distractions. And I find that turning off the notifications on social media and email and Slack, um, setting a, if anybody knows the Pomodoro technique, I'm a big advocate of that, where you set a timer for say 25 minutes and you are dedicated to just working on that single task for 25 minutes. And it's amazing what you can get done in 25 minutes of undistracted effort. You actually get in a flow state. You actually lose track of time and it becomes actually an enjoyable experience. Um, and then when that timer goes off, well, I want to step away from the desk, take a break. Not a break of checking social media, but maybe yeah. taking a walk outside. You know, we live in beautiful areas around this time of year, so it's easy to walk outside and get the fresh air. And then I come back energized, ready to go. Yeah, no, I, I think this is an incredibly important point. And I think uh, the last point that I would just uh, ask you about is, so if you're if you're working for yourself and all that, this is fine. If you work for an organization and a manager, maybe what you have to do is start educating them yeah. Like managing upwards and educating them say i'm i'm going to start working in a slightly different way than you've seen me work before here's why i'm doing it here's what it's going to mean for you but i will repay you with results yes it's exactly right results will give you that autonomy autonomy and freedom and the best thing that you can do is hey here are my guiding principles share that with your leaders share that with your coworkers Here's the best way for me to operate. Here's, I would respect if you could allow me to be the best version of myself by working this way. A perfect example could be aligning with your chronotype. In other words, are you a night owl or are you an early bird or somewhere in between? By allowing everybody to understand when you are peak energy, when you're low energy, when you're off limits time, um, it just makes makes it easier and for everyone to understand, oh, okay, Brandon is not available at, at this time. I can't expect him to respond back to me on Slack or Google chat. Um, those very simple things will allow you to work in confidence. You don't have to feel like somebody's looking over your shoulder. I'm bold enough to even say that, hey, if I need a power nap for 25 minutes in the afternoon, I'm gonna do it rather than grabbing uh, another cup of coffee or even a Red Bull, I'm going to do it, which is pervasive in, in SaaS cultures, which is just work hard and work harder to get the deal done before the end of the quarter. And we start doing, we start compromising our morals that way. We start compromising the quality of service that we can deliver. But just by being open and authentic, and it does take a good culture. So, um, yeah. but you've got to, you've got to put in the effort to lay that out here are my principles. Here's what's guiding the way that I work and I will be successful. 
And when you get those results, no matter way to keep getting that freedom and autonomy for yourself. Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, I did a, I did a, um, a lean office uh, course in Michigan University a number of years back a couple of a week or two. I can't remember how long it was, but the professor who taught it actually had in his contract written that he had an hour every afternoon for a power nap. I love it. Was it. in his contract. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's smart because if you once you know yourself and you know how you can perform the best, why not? I mean, we talked about athletes. Athletes have a performance coach, they have a mindset coach, they have an agent, they have somebody helping them prep for the press and, and give quality interviews. Uh, LeBron James spends a million and a half dollars a year on his own just to keep his body in tip top shape to keep performing year, season after season, year after year and winning championships. and. Yet in sales, we don't have any of that. Um, yeah. So it's really up to us to sort of define those rules. And it's very, again, very simple things of just, well, when do I work best? Well, why don't I go all in on working best that way? Which accounts are best for me to work on? Why don't I get rid of some of the accounts and give them to somebody else to another specialist? These are small little exercises that a team could do in sales that would make a dramatic impact. Yeah, They're no, often I, 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 I totally agree. And, and I love that idea about, you know, figuring out how you how you work best. I mean, it's even like in in MMA and that you will see some athletes yeah. who train late at night, like Floyd in boxing, Floyd Mayweather, there's a classic one, like he goes and trains in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, some people are up to crack of dawn. It's not yeah. it's different for different people. And I think we've done this kind of one size fits all for too long. Yeah, yeah. And it just it doesn't work. Uh, the, the microscope has been brought out with the pandemic and hybrid work, or remote work, whatever it is, it's, it's, it's a new era on, on how we work. And now the power is in the employee. And it's, it's really important that, that we take personal responsibility in understanding, getting that awareness first of how you best operate and then be able to cement that with your leaders, your coworkers to say, okay, let's rally behind this. If I can do this, what if, what if everybody did this in the organization? And then we're, we're sort of understanding one another. We can actually have more empathy for one another um, because we understand, hey, this person's a night owl. I'm going to let them be the best and be the most creative. If they want to work at night, why force them to try to get up early in the morning for a team meeting when they're just not going to perform their best. Let's just use the science and data uh, to, to rally behind when we can be our best operators. Yeah. And just in case anyone's interested, Night Owl here. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not at my best first thing in the morning, but I'm fantastic late at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, listen, Brandon, this has been uh, this has been great. All of Brandon's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Sure. So in my day job, I am a v VP of Strategic Account Solutions. Even though I have a VP title, I'm an individual contributor. Uh, so I work with some of the world's largest brands on helping enable a transformation through conversational AI. And then um, a passion project of mine, uh, which is called Be Focused, Live Great, talks about developing this personal operating system and taking an anti-hustle approach to strategic selling. And uh, I'm very bullish on talking about that. So folks can find me on LinkedIn, connect with me, follow me there. I post frequently. And uh, if anybody's interested, Be Focused, Live Great. Uh, if, if you want to join the movement and go down uh, the, the rabbit hole a little bit further on developing a personal operating system. I'd love to, to see you there. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And yeah, if you're if you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling like your way is not working, go ahead, go check it out. Uh, be focused and live great. As I said, all the links will be below here. Um, thank you again, Brandon. Thank you all for listening and watching today. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.